Dhaka, Bangladesh, a city of 10 million and growing fast. But it's not just adults who are attracted to the big city. Many children, as young as seven or eight, arrive on these streets to escape poverty and abuse. What they usually get is far from this dream. Instead, they end up as runners for criminal gangs or in the sex trade. With no one looking out for them, life is bleak. Now, there is hope, a project giving these children food, shelter, counseling, and the opportunity to break free from the cycle of exploitation. This place is most famous for one of the biggest uh, wholesale markets in Dhaka city. Street children come to this area in search of earning opportunities. They, they are also involved in picking and stealing vegetables from the trucks. They also get involved with a lot of gangs uh, that control this area. They get forced into stealing, pickpocketing and there's a section of people over here also who force street children into uh, sex work. The children living on the streets have often run away from abuse. We came to Dhaka and lived in a slum in the Tagar area. From a very young age, my stepfather used to beat me and force me to go out to work to bring the money in. My stepbrothers and sisters would also often beat me. I worked as a servant in several different homes. They treated me very badly, sometimes very badly. One employer repeatedly abused me, and so I ran away and found work in other homes. But finally, I ended up on the streets. The staff will walk around in these areas every day. They come, they just roam around, uh, they look for children, particularly children who are new on the street over here. This building, a centre run by Aparagio, Bangladesh, and supported by a small international NGO, Child Hope UK, is a refuge for the children who are free to drop in or use it as their home. Inside, they are safe from exploitation and from the gamble of life on the streets. About 500,000 children are on the streets in Bangladesh. I would say rather 99% children, particularly the girls, they are the victim of the sexual abuse and exploitation situation. So that was the main background. Uh, we started working with the children to reduce their sufferings and the pains. The abuse of trust they have suffered at the hands of gang members leaves many children suspicious of anyone offering help. When I first came to the centre, I was very scared because wherever I'd been, I'd been abused and exploited. So I was scared it might happen to me here too. I'd heard stories that this centre extracted blood from the children and sold their kidneys as well. So I had that fear when I arrived. The children are under no pressure to stay, but many choose to. At the centre, they have the opportunity to take classes which mean the chance of getting a proper job. Some of those living at the centre have gone on to get work in the garment factories once they are old enough to work legally. A lot of people think that the workforce is exploited, they are even abused. But that actually is, is not the fact. If these garment factories had to close down, where would these hundreds and thousands of women and girls go? They would be on the streets. With no other alternatives, they could be forced into prostitution in itself. There is the opportunity for promotion. It's up to the supervisors. You can go from being a helper to being a machine operator. But the garments industry is not the only option. A business centre run by the children in central Dhaka helps them get experience and skills that are vital in the jobs market. I now work as a representative at the Prime Life Insurance Company. We sit down and do the calculations in the office 
and if someone comes in, we explain the various schemes available. Strong links have been built with the local community, offering opportunities for work and changing attitudes towards these children. What we are trying to do is work with communities so that they understand how children get abused, exploited. As well as counselling, drama can help the children come to terms with their traumatic experience and help them gain a more positive outlook. Once children started uh, changing and developing a positive attitude in their life, they started participating in the, in the project. They started believing that this project was theirs. The secret to the project's success is giving the children themselves control over running of the centre and often for the first time over their own lives. As they progress, many children become peer educators and take on a mentoring role for younger ones. I wanted people to give me a little attention, love and affection. I wanted education and a safe place to live. I wanted to listen to others as well as having people listen to my problems. It was the children themselves who took the responsibility for their project, who monitored their project, who made the decisions and who made this project a success in itself. These children are proof that with the right approach those on the streets can gain confidence and turn their lives around. With the help of the centre, some are even rebuilding the relationships with their family. Even though my stepfather used to beat me and my stepbrothers and sisters used to bully me, after my coming to the centre and because I am studying at a government school, they now treat me with respect and they accept me and treat me well.